Hi, this is Mike Green, and this is Riala Drums. What you just saw was the groove generator, and we'll come back to that. But first, let's take a look at the important part of this library, which is the drums. Now, I've used a lot of drum libraries. I have just about all of them. So when we put together this library, there were two things I wanted. First, I wanted great sounding drums. Now, I've recorded and mixed a lot of drums over the years, so I happen to think we succeeded on that front. For me, this is the only library I use now. In my opinion, the sounds are that good. But of course, you may be a little skeptical, and I don't blame you. So let me put it this way. If you don't think these sounds are great, then send me an email and I'll give you your money back. Easy as that. Now don't worry, I'll play a bunch of sounds in a minute, but let me get to the second thing I wanted in a drum library, and that is I want a library that's fast. With all due respect to other drum libraries, I don't want to spend a bunch of time adjusting mic bleed and other parameters just to get one drum sounding how I want. I know there are people who do like to work that way, and that's fine. Really, it is. But Reala Drums is designed so you have a lot of drums that you can audition quickly and get right to making music as opposed to twiddling your knobs. <laughs> so let me show you what I mean. Let's play some snares. Now, to choose snares, you can use this menu, or you can use this knob. Or my favorite way to work is to use the up-down buttons. This way you can go through sounds until you hear one that you like. Let's say no. I kind of like that one, but I'm going to keep going because I want to show you the sounds. Now let me show you something else you can do. Instead of the up-down buttons here, I also have key switches over here that do the same thing. So we can cycle this way without having to have your mouse on the screen. <laughs> I like that one. It's kind of trashy. That one's trashy too. That one's... <laughs> I like a lot of these sounds. Oh, this is kind of fun, give it a little military thing. <laughs> now, there's another thing that you need to know about these. There are 42 snares altogether, so obviously you get a lot of sounds there, but for each of these 42 snares, you have four different mic mix selections. You've got the close mic. Actually, let me take off the reverb. There we go. You have like a room mix, which is the close mic mixed with some overheads. Then you have the rock setting, which is overheads along with the further back room mics. And then you have the B setting, which is more of a big room, John Bonham kind of a sound. In fact, let's put that on the kick as well. In fact, let's do hi-hat, some beast on that as well. And let's see if I can play this rather than sequencing. <laughs> Not bad for two hands, but you get the idea. So let me take these back to the room setting because it's a little bit easier to hear the sounds raw. Not as raw as the close mic, of course, but who really uses close mic in these situations? Although truth is, actually, I do use close mic for kick quite a bit. Let's go through some of those. That's kick one, obviously. Kick two. Three. Kick four. Kick five. Kick six, and kick seven. And of course you have the other mic settings. As I said, a lot of times I do like to use a close mic with the kick because it's just really tight then. Um, it's, it's not actually a natural sound, but it's, it's a pretty good sound. You can cover a lot of sounds here, obviously. In fact, let's take a look at some hi-hats. Oh. 
hopefully you can see the benefit of having so much selection that you can get so quickly. Again, this is how I like to work where I don't spend a lot of time tweaking sounds, rather I just find the sound that I want to use and go. So now let's take a look at some toms. So I think you can see there are a lot of tom choices as well. And then with the ride symbol, you've got a choice of um, 20, or actually 24, because some of these are doubled with the bell sounds. But you've got lots of choices for the rides. We also have it mapped so you have three different rides. If you click this and you get ride one, ride two, ride three, and each of them can be set to different rides. You can also cycle through this way here. Um, the same thing with the snare, by the way. There's the first snare, and then you've got the alternate snare, and then we have brush sweeps, and then you've got the side stick. And for each of those, of course, with side stick, you get a bunch of choices too. That's how you cycle through. Same deal with the crashes. You've got um, four different places where the crashes are. And for each of those crashes, there are, I don't know what that is, 20, about 30, 30, 30 to 35 crashes to choose from. And then with percussion, it's a similar kind of deal. I'm not going to play all of these because it's just going to take too much time. But with percussion, then you've got um, three places where those can be. Um, and for each of those, you've got a choice of a few tambourines and cowbell, woodblock, and a couple of other sounds. So, as you can see, you get a lot of drum sounds. And not only do you have four mix options for each drum, but you have other options as well. The first one I'll mention is the tuning knob for each drum. Don't overlook this, because it's a lot more useful than you might think. Pretty cool, right? And then we have the usual suspects here in the mixer channel strip. So while we're on the topic, let's go to the mixer page. Obviously, each drum has its own mixer channel strip with a solo knob, volume fader, pan, EQ, reverb, and some compression and distortion effects. It's all pretty obvious stuff, although I'll mention that with the EQ, we set all the frequency and cue points for each drum to their sweet spots. It makes our EQ more musical than others. Again, try it for yourself. If you don't think we've come up with a better mousetrap, we'll give you your money back. So now, let's move to the groove generator. Now personally, I never use the MIDI grooves that come with drum libraries. The reason is that even though there might be lots of grooves, it's really hard to find one that's going to work for your song, because you have to load them one at a time, then listen to it. If that one's not right, and it seems like it never is, then you load the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one, and it takes forever. And even then, it still might not be exactly what you're looking for. But the main thing that bothers me about that is that it's not a musical way to work. It's basically just dragging loops into GarageBand. No offense. What I wanted to do with this library was make it more like what a real drum session would be like. You ask a drummer to play a beat, uh, maybe something else. No, not that. Nope. No. Something else. Close. <laughs> no, not that. Yes, that one. But can you make it a little busier? No, I was wrong. Make it simpler. Okay, keep the kick and snare simple, but make the hi-hat busier. What if you used ride symbol instead of hat? Huh. 
How about toms instead? Okay, now take us out on a fill. <laughs> so I think you can see how easy this is, and more importantly, how musical it is to work this way. It's fun to play with. Now, you can see that we have lots of beats here, and we also separated out some swing or shuffle grooves, some jazz beats, and some Latin beats. We'll keep adding more, by the way, so if you have specific requests, let us know. Now, we also added alternate time signatures. Here's 5-4. And then we have 6-4, 7-4, 6-8, and even 3-4. Now, let's talk about how fills work, which I dare say is pretty cool. Check this out. First, you have a ton of fills, and you can assign them to any key switch you want. All these green keys are fills. Now, while I'm here, I should probably talk about the key switches for a minute. You can create whatever keyboard mapping you want. On any key, you can assign a drum, or you can assign control key switches to start and stop the beat. Watch these two keys here. I've also assigned these two keys to go to the next beat, or previous beat. Watch, I'll start the beat here, then press these keys. Now I'll play fill and stop. Pretty cool. And then I assign these two keys to go through the drum choices for whichever drum you selected on the main page. Okay, so let's get back to how the fills work. Now, all the fill key switches will play either a one beat fill or two beat or three beat or four beat. If the beat's not playing, then you select the length with this menu. So what happens if the beat is playing? Do you have to set this menu each time? Nope. <laughs> Here at Realitone, we like to make things as easy as possible. So our software automatically figures out where you are in the beat and makes the fill work with that. Check it out. Gotta admit, that's pretty cool. There's one other thing on this page I wanna point out, and that's the MIDI drag and drop. What this does is that it lets you drag a MIDI file of the current beat onto your sequencer. So I'll bring up my sequencer and drag this file. And there's the MIDI info for the beat. This way you can combine beats and construct your song however you want. And of course, with this MIDI file, you can also make whatever custom changes to the beat you like because, well, Riala Drums is close to perfect, but you'll want to put your own finishing touches to it. But we went a step further with these drag and drop files. Well, actually two steps further. You also have the option of dragging the most recent fill to your sequencer. There it is. And the piece de resistance, you can even drag the last performance to your sequencer, which means all the notes that got played the last time you hit the play button. So if you're clowning around and you do something that you really like, that performance got saved, and all you have to do is drag the file to your sequencer. So, there's still a few more things I want to show you. Of course you have lots and lots of drums to choose from, but we also put together some kit presets here. There are just a couple more things I want to show you. We've got a rack page, which is a way of seeing and editing all the drums at once. It's as if you had a rack of Elisa's DM Pros. And then on the settings page, a lot of people have been asking for individual outs, so that's available here. And you can also select various velocity scaling options. 
And maybe there are a few other things, but I've talked long enough, don't you think? <laughs> so I'm guessing you have two questions right now. First, how did we manage to pack so much goodness into one instrument? <laughs> and the second question, how do I get a copy? Well, I'll save the answer to the first question for a future video. But the second question, well, if you head on over to Realitone.com, you'll see that we've saved a copy just for you. So do yourself and your music a favor. Head on over to Realitone.com and pick up a copy of Realitrons. Thank you for watching.